just how chaotic should we expect the world to be? And by the late 60s, these suddenly seemed very pertinent questions. In these turbulent times, just as Lyapunov had been drawn to study instability during the Russian Revolution, mathematician David Ruel was drawn to study the onset of turbulence. We proposed that hydrodynamic turbulence was associated where there is this sensitive dependence on initial condition, but it happens almost everywhere, that it happens all the time. Turbulence was thought to arise because of the sheer complexity of the phenomenon. Ruel, through a combination of experiments and mathematics, proved that turbulence was not the result of complexity, but was caused by the mathematics of sensitivity to initial conditions. The butterfly effect and turbulence were everywhere. This is not completely a coincidence that I got interested in this problem in 1968. These were the May 68 events. This was uh, an atmosphere where questions were asked that uh, uh, would not normally be asked. The times became rhyme because the mathematics was there, because the computers were there, and suddenly there was this um, enormously interesting experience of interacting with people in different disciplines. Mathematically, turbulence and chaos were established, and psychologically were making it harder to pretend the world was still Newtonian. The language of chaos was beginning to enter our vocabulary. The notion of chaos has been around since the, the early part of the 20th century and, and before that, actually. It wasn't called chaos until later, I guess, in the 70s. And that's when people really grasped it, you know, this idea that there was this thing that we could call something that, that, was, that was indicative of what we could see in the world that we could use to excuse all sorts of things we couldn't predict. By the late 60s and 70s, the optimism of the 50s was in retreat. Once again, the man-made world spun out of control. There was social, political and economic turmoil from Paris to Detroit. And while ordinary people were shocked by the events, what was shocking for the experts was their failure to predict them. And so it was a terrible shock when it didn't. It was really very hard for them to take. People thought they'd understood it and it turned out not to be true. In the late 60s and increasingly we moved into the 1970s, all these laws broke down really quite spectacularly because they weren't laws, they were simply statistical relationships which happened to hold for a relatively short period of time. Economists had thought they had understood the laws that governed how the economy worked and thought this then gave them the power to predict what would happen. And what's clear is that forecasts only work when, in a sense, almost anybody could make a good forecast, when the economy is state, when it's going along very nicely. Anybody can make a reasonable projection then and be reasonably correct. What forecasts are very bad at, when you precisely need them, when there's a major turnaround, when there's a recession, and the track record on forecasting recessions is really appalling, it's essentially non-existent. The turbulence of the 1970s convinced the economists as well as the environmentalists that their faith in large-scale prediction and control was just wrong. They came to accept they would no more be able to control the economy than they could the weather. The era of command and control was over. But there was a second, more controversial part of the mathematics upon which they fundamentally disagreed. Ruel and others had found that even very simple systems, such as pendulums driven by a motor or double pendulums, where two are connected together, could give rise to highly complex chaotic behavior. And now, as they used these simple systems to explore further, they began to discover the rules of this chaotic world. They found that the more connected and interlinked systems became, the more likely they were to become chaotic and turbulent and that the more you pumped the system, the faster you ran it, the more chaotic it would become. A 
And yet in the real world, this is exactly what began to happen. On October the 27th, 1986, computers connected the world's financial systems together into a single global economy. And the modern free market was born. 